Here's something for an actor to think about. I am considering, do I eat it now? Or, or maybe should I rather just have half of it now? Or, or maybe, maybe I, I shouldn't have any at all for the moment. And I have two ways of making that decision. I can go with my intuitive hunch, like, oh, yes, I can taste it already. <laughs> oh, I'm going to eat it. Or I can think about the quantity of sugars that I've already had today, how much exercise I've done, what are the calories that are involved, um, and, uh, and work out a more logical approach to my <laughs> overindulgence. And it's the same for you, the actor, when you're making an acting decision. It's the same as eating chocolate. Because we have only two modes of making decisions. And, and uh, psychologists have written about it. Um, there's the, the fast-thinking, intuitive one, and the slow, logical approach. Slow thinking. And you're either going to use one of those processes or the other. And I suspect that often what happens is that many actors use a mixture of both. They do some logical thinking and some intuitive thinking. But the challenge is to get the balance right between the two. And if you watch actors in the audition room, many of them, I guess, will listen to the director's notes and then probably not make changes to the core foundation issues that, that they've put in place, but they'll listen to the vibe of what's been said and then jump in following a, an intuitive hunch. Like, I think... It kind of feels like this. Might that be you? Well, what I try and train actors to do is to remove the intuitive hunch as much as possible from the core foundation decisions. To try and make those decisions in a, in a logical way. And... When you work that way, it creates different patterns of behaviour in actors. So here you're about to see two actors who are working with a team of directors for the first time. All these years I've been wondering if Anthony was in trouble or in prison or, or goodness knows what. Yeah. And as long as I didn't know, I could tell myself that he was happy somewhere and he'd be all right. But what if he's, what if he died in Vietnam or, or, or came back with no legs or, 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 or lived on the streets? Yeah, okay, well, there's no point upsetting yourself because, well, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, that was, that was really good. That was um, super powerful. Yeah. They don't know each other, but they listen to the director's notes. I'd mm -hmm. love to see if you can even go further. Okay. And especially in that, like, sort of closing little monologue, I feel like... And when the time comes, they take their time... Whenever you're ready. ...to think through the options so that they make the best choice to give the, the outcome that the, the directors are asking for. I'm ready when you are. It mostly takes between 10 and 15 seconds. I had a friend and her daughter paid for her to go to Florida... Well, what they have done in that time is made clear, logical, core foundation process choices that will give the directors what they want. And then they trust their intuition, their intuitive powers during the performance to deliver those outcomes. I'm, I'm getting worried. Now it's getting closer. See, all these years I've worrying about was Anthony in trouble was he in prison was goodness knows what and 
as long as I didn't know, I could tell myself that he was happy somewhere and then he was doing all right. But what if, what if he died in Vietnam? What if he came back with no legs? What if he's... Look, um, there's no point upsetting yourself. We don't know what we don't know. We'll just have to deal with it when we get there. Great stuff, guys. Incredible. Yeah, that was um, that was great. No, like what you just did then versus the first scene, that was mm. a complete flip. Yeah. Um, so that is, yeah, a testament to your range and capabilities. Yeah. With different actors, the process is exactly the same. They listen to the direction. Um, and then just really exaggerate that kind of, that frustration um, that you both have in your characters. Okay. Oh. All right, cool. Break a leg. But they don't just jump in. All right, let me know when you're ready. They take time to make practical adjustments. And once their choices are locked in, they're relaxed and focused, and they are ready now to trust their intuitive instincts. Okay. That's excellent, Martin. It's much more practical isn't it? To be using your slow thinking mode to make logical choices about process issues and allowing your listening to drive your intuitive, spontaneous choices in performance mode. I don't think that's the way that many actors work. But these two directors were really impressed with their results. Great, guys. Well done. Yeah, that was amazing to see. Um, and, yeah, I think it's really cool that you're able to just flip and, and still nail it like that. Yeah. Often actors are not sure whether they've been in logical or intuitive mode when they're uh, making their choices. And recently I've read a book where the acting coach, having explained a series of detailed, specific exercises then recommended that actors do not use them on the set and do not talk to directors about these exercises. And there may be reasons for that, but I think it's going to swing the pendulum across to all the decisions being largely intuitive ones with the erratic outcomes that that, that pathway often produces. So the rehearsal room process is aimed at getting your logical thinking in the right balanced spot to make clear functional choices and then using your intuitive, spontaneous playfulness in performance. That seems to me to be a highly practical way of going about the acting job. I hope you had a great Easter. I'll be talking acting again next week. Cheers. If you have a question about this unique approach to acting process, you can email Richard at rehearsalroom.com. Make a booking for a free 30 minute chat. Or download the ebook, it's free too.